Thank you and welcome to the show this day. Today is the topic, the, today's topic is the Tennessee State University March in Band. And we're fortunate to have with us to talk about the Tennessee State University March in Band, the director, uh, Mr. Edward Graves, who is not only the director of the uh, Tennessee State University March in Band, but he's also a longtime professor at Tennessee State University. And Professor Graves, let me welcome you to uh, the show this morning. Thank you, Dr. Haynes. It's truly an honor to be here. You know, uh, uh, Professor Graves, I think that uh, many people have been uh, simply thrilled by the uh, antics of the Tennessee State University marching band. And I, and I happen to uh, recall this past uh, week that uh, you uh, played before some 60-odd thousand people uh, in uh, Memphis at the, uh, Memphis at the Classic. And I think within that context, we can really uh, talk about the band today. But before we talk about the band, Let's talk about Ed Graves and to have you to give us some information about your background, your education, and perhaps some of those things that were important and influential in your life that eventually led you to uh, that seat uh, this uh, morning. Let's talk about it from that perspective. Okay. Well, that's really an honor to be able to do that. Uh, um, I grew up in Forest, Mississippi, a small town of about 5,000 people, which is uh, east of Jackson. Uh, my parents were both uh, educators. My father was a county agent and my mother was a school teacher. Uh, of course, we came from a family there of, uh, that really believed in education and the value of an education. Uh, I have two brothers and a sister. One of my brothers is a pediatrician who was educated at Meharry and Howard University. Mm -hmm. I have another brother that's a dentist. He was, a, was uh, received his bachelor's degree at Tennessee State University and his dental degree at uh, Meharry have a sister that uh, got an education at uh, Tuskegee University and uh, she's a dietitian. Uh, so our parents were, uh, they got all of us Involved educated. In education. Yes, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. uh, of course I been watching uh, one day with my father a football game back in 1955 or so. We saw a football game in Chicago, uh, Chicago Bears and uh, I believe it was Los Angeles Rams and at halftime the Tennessee State University Band uh, was featured. As, as late, as, as early as that, that date. Uh, that's right. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. at that point, I decided, I remember saying to him, you know, that's where I want to go to school, mm -hmm. where we could uh, be in an uh, organization that performs like that and a school where that gets that kind of exposure. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that's where we began. Uh, uh, my family, uh, to kind of carry that on with the, the belief of our parents in terms of a value of education. Mm -hmm. They were both great supporters of their alma mater, which is Alcorn State University. Mm -hmm. um, I have uh, my wife and I, my wife's a nurse. Mm -hmm. uh, we have two children. Mm -hmm. uh, my oldest daughter uh, did a, had a degree in uh, chemistry from Tennessee State University mm -hmm. and uh, a dental degree from Harry. Mm -hmm. uh, she's presently on the uh, staff at uh, teaching faculty at Columbia University in New York as a prostodontist. Mm -hmm. uh, my youngest daughter is, uh, has a PhD in biomedical engineering. She uh, got her bachelor's degree at Spelman mm -hmm. and a uh, dual degree at Boston University, mm -hmm. uh, master's and a PhD at Case Western Reserve. So we've tried to carry on uh, the, the tradition and beliefs of our parents in terms of the value of education. Uh, which gives me to the point of uh, after completing my bachelor's here at Tennessee State University, mm -hmm. being greatly influenced by Mr. Frank Greer and Dr. Edward C. Lewis, mm -hmm. uh, to and encouraged to go on to get a master's in music education at the University of Illinois, mm -hmm. and which prepared me to, to just carry on the, the kind of ideals and the principles that I was taught at Tennessee State University and at home <laughs> to, to, to want to fulfill and live the dream of just continuing to be involved in instrumental music education mm -hmm. and uh, particularly with the aristocratic bands, which is almost like a dream come true. Mm -hmm. uh, after completing the master's at Illinois, we started out, I was very fortunate to get a, a position as the band director at Tuskegee Institute. Mm -hmm. uh, went from Tuskegee to uh, North Carolina a and uh, and then at uh, to Shaw University, where I e eventually got to be the head of the department and in addition to the director of bands there. 
And from Shaw, we came to Tennessee State in 1979. And we've just been having a ball and really enjoying being back home uh, at Tennessee State University. Mm -hmm. the, the, I think that the honor that really uh, starts all of this is that uh, we were visited by Mr. Greer, mm -hmm. uh, where we at Shaw honored him in a festival that we were having there. And he came back and talked with Dr. Lewis, and they talked with me and invited me to Tennessee State for a week's visit. And uh, uh, well, before I left here, I was uh, the director of bands, bands at Tennessee, Tennessee State. State. You, you know, uh, looking back over that, uh, what about your early uh, musical education? You see, because uh, in order to even have an aspiration to be a part of the uh, band at this great home, uh, this great halftime activity that you witnessed, uh, you had to have had some kind of uh, inspirational uh, toward music education have been involved. I mean, how did that come about? How did you become involved in that? Well, from the very beginning, I, um, in, in my hometown, um, and of course, we had a small school there where you maybe uh, everything was from grade uh, 1 through 12. We had a principal that, that really believed in activities for students. Everybody in that school had to be involved in something. And at one time, the principal taught agriculture, was the football coach, basketball coach, mm -hmm. taught agriculture and something else too, and did everything. He had all the keys to everything. Mm -hmm. uh, he started a band by bringing a man at that time that was a band director at Alcorn, mm -hmm. and he came to our school once a week. Mm -hmm. So that's where we started. Uh, I started when I, was, I think, was seventh grade. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, my band director took uh, uh, myself and uh, another student from that program to Chicago to Vandercook oh. College of Music mm -hmm. in the summertime for two summers, mm -hmm. where we were exposed at a, another level, mm -hmm. and which really helped prepare me to, to yeah. come to Tennessee mm -hmm. State and be involved with the, the outstanding program here. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we, uh, of course, clarinet was my uh, major instrument. Mm -hmm. And I was greatly influenced there when I first got to Tennessee State by with clarinet teachers of Mr. Ancio Francisco. Mm -hmm. That was Mr. Greer's assistant band director and later, later by uh, Mr. Benjamin Butler, mm -hmm. uh, who was a graduate of Tennessee State and one of Mr. Greer's uh, students mm -hmm. that really guided us all at that time. And, mm -hmm. You know, Dr. Haney, when we graduated Tennessee State in 1962, there were six members of my class that mm -hmm. went on to be college band directors. Mm -hmm. oh, good. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is something that has really given me uh, the interest to want to build the same type of thing here with our students now. Uh, we, we're getting a lot of uh, calls and interest from people around the country mm -hmm. wanting Tennessee State University band directors. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, all of this, I think, that uh, are some values that, that I brought from home with me through Tennessee State University that enabled me to go places like the University of Illinois mm -hmm. and be able to compete and survive through that and mm -hmm. get the most of the opportunities I had in terms of being able to get an education. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, uh, when you look at this, at the band, and, and I think that uh, all of that information simply, uh, and we're just about a minute from our first commercial break, but uh, during that break, let us uh, have you to uh, sort of reflect on uh, the band itself, which mm -hmm. is to say that uh, this is uh, a world-known and world-famous band because you've made uh, international trips and et cetera. Yes. And since you've been involved in most of that, uh, when we come back during the second segment, what we want you to do is to look at that band and think about uh, how small it was when it started, when you first met that band, mm -hmm. and some of the uh, challenges that you've been able to overcome in order to, uh, this past uh, weekend, as we said, in order to uh, carry that band in front of some 62,000 people. Uh, in the uh, Liberty Bowl in, 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 in uh, the city of Memphis, you see. And, and, and we believe that that was an extraordinary accomplishment. Mm -hmm. But that is only one of the things that that band has been doing, I know personally, for, for many, many years. And uh, so let's talk about it from that perspective when we come back. Let's talk about the uh, band. And I okay. think that that way it will give us an opportunity. And we'll be back with you following this short commercial break. Okay. Marching Van.